This video is about building a Recreator 3D plastic bottle recycling machine. There's a design floating around on the internet for a contraption that can take a plastic bottle and turn it into 3D printer filament. It uses a process called pultrusion, which involves cutting the bottle into a thin, continuous strip, then pulling the strip through a hot nozzle to reshape it into a tube. This tube of plastic can then be fed into a 3D printer as filament. The machine was designed by Joshua R. Taylor, and the build is well documented, with freely available STL parts for printed components and detailed build notes. A clever aspect of the machine is that it reuses the mechatronic components, such as motor, heater, and control board, from a popular off-the-shelf 3D printer, the Creality Ender 3. This printer is available new for a little under 200 bucks, and I would guess it's the most popular 3D printer ever by sales volume. However, its cheap price comes with the trade-off of reliability, and if you buy one, it's going to take a lot of tinkering for it to make good prints. I'm guessing its high sales and finicky nature result in a lot of returns, and these returns end up on eBay sold in four parts condition for 40 to 50 bucks. Yep, that looks like it's four parts all right. I've never used this model of printer before, so I have no idea how these parts would go together to form a working printer. The first thing to do is get everything disassembled. The final machine will reuse the electronics, a motor, and some of the structural components. Once everything is organized, I can start making modifications. I need to modify the extruder from the 3D printer to make filament instead of use filament. The stock extruder takes in 1.75 mm filament and produces a 0.4 mm extrusion, which is layered to build up the printed object. To make filament, it needs to take in a 10 mm strip and produce a 1.75 mm extrusion. I'll use a step drill as a tapered reamer to expand the bore of the hot end, then drill out the nozzle to 1.75 mm. The build notes say to do this with a hand drill, but since I have access to a lathe, I'll use it. I need to change out the three-jaw chuck for the four-jaw chuck, and this takes longer than the actual machining work. I have to make sure that the part is perfectly centered to the axis of the lathe by adjusting the four jaws and checking with a dial indicator. Dialing in a four-jaw chuck can be quick with practice and skill, but that skill I don't have, so I'll save some time here and skip over this part. Two hours later. Looks good enough. The build notes say to use one of these cheap stepless drill bits as a tapered reamer to enlarge the bore of the hot end heat sink. These bits are intended for drilling holes in sheet metal, and I was skeptical of using one as a reamer, but it works pretty well. With a little cutting fluid, it had no problem reaming out the aluminum. I also used the lathe to drill out the brass nozzle from 0.4 millimeters to 1.7 millimeters. Most of the components for the machine are 3D printed, and it took 10 full plates and almost a week of continuous printing to print everything on my Ender 6. Most parts were printed from carbon fiber PLA, and some parts were printed from ABS for better temperature stability. Those six rubber feedies were printed out of TPU, which is a soft rubbery material. With the extruder modifications complete and all the 3D parts printed, it's time for the final assembly. At this point, I ran into a wiring issue. Notice that the screen is on the opposite side of the machine from what's shown on the build instructions. This is because the wires and the power supply that came with the printer were too short to route them to where it's supposed to be. So I moved them to the other side. The bottle cutting mechanism uses two bearings to form a rotary shear. The bearings are from the linear rollers of the 3D printer and were polished off camera to have a sharp edge. I had an issue with the hot end not reaching the set point temperature because the cooling fan cooled it off too much. I cut up an aluminum can to form a baffle to reduce the airflow around the heater and nozzle. This helped, but it didn't solve the problem. Later, you'll see that I ended up just sticking a wrench in the fan to keep it from spinning. To get the machine started, I cut off a strip of plastic from the bottle with scissors, and used this as a leader to thread the cutter and the nozzle. Once the nozzle is threaded, the heater is turned on to 210 degrees Celsius. Once the heater is up to temperature and the plastic can be pulled through the nozzle, 
The filament spool is started which pulls the plastic through automatically. It takes about 30 minutes to process one 2 liter bottle. PET plastic absorbs water, so after processing the filament needs to be dried by baking it in an oven. Once dry, it can be used in any 3D printer that can print PETG. PET is very similar to PETG, however PET does not have the additive glycol, which is what makes PETG more flexible and easier to run through a 3D printer. Here I'm printing a small keychain on my Creality Ender 6. I can print two of these keychains out of one bottle. This first sample is an example of what happens if you don't dry the filament before use. The water becomes steam as the filament melts and it forms a brittle foam. This was printed with dry filament and it's a lot cleaner. That's all. Thanks for watching.